second question, and Bruno, uh, uh, this one is specifically for you, and Nick, you can obviously chip in um, where you feel the, the need to. Um, so specifically, we talk about trusts here, Bruno. Um, if anybody uh, keeps an eye on social media, I mean, is aware of the SIU or, or the Hawks, um, they've been sort of um, having quite a, a tight rope and on fraud and corruption now. And as things are unraveling, it, 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 it turns out that people are using trusts a lot to administer um, a lot of fraud and corruption. And then there's this misconception, and this is where you come in then, Bruno, that you, once you use a trust to sort of administer fraud and corruption, um, the, your conduct is sort of uh, doesn't really penetrate towards you and you don't, you don't really have any personal liability. So you can almost be like, you know what, um, the trust did that and not myself or, or the trustees or whatever. And you could just sort of do away with the negligence or that conduct or that obviously criminal activity. So maybe just touch um, a, a bit on that for us, Bruno. And then obviously, are there any sort of implications that maybe SARS is uh, tightening the rope and mm. looking to maybe make sure that people become more responsible for uh, activities under trust? Sure. Um, so I'm going to uh, go out on a limb here. It's, it's going to sound it's going to sound critical, but my it's it is my uh, personal opinion, um, and uh, you know we take it. Um, you know people can take it uh, how how they they feel it. Um, so the problem. So the first thing that you need to ask yourself is why are trusts. Uh, conducive to fraudulent activities, right? Now, there's two reasons. Number one, a trustee can be drafted in a relatively open-ended way. Um, so your beneficiaries uh, don't necessarily have to be specified to the T. You can have classes of beneficiaries, groups, and the like. So at the end of the day, it's very difficult to trace who's actually benefiting from a trust. But in fairness, our company law did the same thing for many years. Uh, the only difference was in our company law, you can have be a shareholder, but have somebody hold the shares on your behalf. And in the share register, that person is the registered holder, right? Um, so the share register does not necessarily need to have you as the beneficial owner. It only has that specific holder. And only if someone actually requests the company to provide specific detail on who the beneficial owners are, only in those instances would the company actually disclose it. So the reality is our company law never really identified who the ultimate shareholders were, and neither does our trust, right? Companies, however, are a bit more open, transparent, because we've got the CIPC system, um, and although not perfect, I mean, just a few days ago, it crashed. And, uh, you know, there's tons of issues with it. But the reality is you've got the company, you've got the registration number, you can see if it's in business, uh, you, you've even got the, the uh, tax number there, you can see who the directors are, the registered address, push comes to shove, you've got a level of accountability, a connection that you can draw through, uh, through CIPC. So if you go and sue this company, um, you know where to go. You can serve that summons, even if they're not at that address anymore. There's a way of serving that summons on the address that's actually registered, right? The problem with our trusts is it hasn't really, number one, there's no real accountable organization or institution. And this is unfortunately where I, 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 feel, um, I feel that I have to point it out. The master's office it takes trusts, a whole bunch of documents, puts it in a file, but we, we don't, as the public, it's virtually impossible to access this, uh, these, uh, uh, this information. Um, SARS did a review the other day where it tried to reconcile its records with that of the master's office insofar as trusts are concerned. And they only found a 7% likeness between the information and data that they would have. And we know that SARS is jacked. So we know that SARS has as much info as possible. Um, so that is one of the problems is if we don't have a centralized system that's able to cater for, you know, what trust exists, what their numbers are, what the, the, the deeds say, um, then us as the public, obviously trusts are going to be used for fraudulent activities because it's this, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's, um, you know, this, this, uh, this person, some, like hidden in a shadow. 
and mm. you don't know how many trusts you have. I mean, I wouldn't know if you guys have a trust. I can't do a search and go, oh, Nick, you have five trusts. I, I wouldn't know. So Nick could have five. Nick's wife, well, if Nick were married, um, <laughs> would, wouldn't be able to know whether he had a trust or not. <clears throat> so now going back to fraud, is a trust a good place to start hiding stuff? Well, good place. Uh, if you put things in a trust, technically what you're doing is you're handing it over to another person. So a trust, it's not like a company. A company, you give something to a company, but if you're a shareholder, you actually still own a share of that company. A trust is its own person. It's identified as its own person. So time and time again, we've gone to court and we have managed to very easily set aside transactions that go into trust because they're, they're rubbish. I mean, we've had clients approach us going, listen, we're, we're going through a divorce. Give me a trust. I want to start putting things in there. And it's like, no, it's, it's, it's too late, number one, uh, because your intention is obviously, and everyone can see it. It's, it's the reality. If you go to court and you're like, you started uh, the trust three months before a divorce, which you initiated, and all of a sudden now you've got these beneficiaries and you put all your money in there and you're saying it doesn't belong um, in your estate. Yeah. That's not going to work. So the courts are very willing. The problem, again, accountability. How is a wife supposed to know that a husband has a trust on the side where he's putting things in? If the husband hasn't opened up, it's going to be difficult for the wife to figure it out. You'd have to go through the master's records and hope that this person actually set it up. And if he's a beneficiary of a trust that he somehow donated towards, but he's not a trustee, and as a beneficiary, he's not fully named, yes, of course, there's going to be an issue with that. So long story short, what's happened now, Trust Property Control Act requires more information to be given to the master's office. So we got to the point now, and the downside is it's manual. So it, it, things are now just going to be made more expensive because it's not a system like CIPC going, oh, when you register, uh, detail A, B, and C, please. Um, now, unfortunately, it's, oh, if someone's an independent trustee, so the trust service providers um, will now have to supply a whole bunch of information on a consistent basis to the master's office. This is obviously going to take extra effort. It's going to be extra administration. And it's going to cost the client more. So for those people running nice, legit trusts, unfortunately, now there's extra work that we are going to need to undertake. Uh, from a SARS perspective, there's also, so basically to answer the first question, uh, it, if there's, if trust can be used for fraudulent activities very soon, it's going, it's going to be very difficult because they're trying to align the SAR systems and the master systems to the point where it becomes more transparent. Um, anything can be used for fraudulent activities, though. Uh, the question isn't, um, you know, impossible to commit fraud. It's more about how easy it is to commit fraud, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then the second question, so far as SARS is concerned, SARS is tightening up. Um, it's basically, long story cut short, in a trust, you can distribute benefits to a beneficiary um, and the beneficiary has to include it in their tax return. The problem is that SARS didn't have the capacity up until a certain point to make sure that that actually happened, where they see something going out of here and it, like being received in here. So that was one of the downsides is it was very difficult to reconcile this because of when tax returns get submitted. Uh, this is obviously tightening up. So now SARS is expecting that uh, trustees actually submit this information to say, hey, listen, there's a transaction with a beneficiary. This is what he's getting or will be getting. So I'm just giving you the heads up. So SARS can now record this on their system to know, oh great, next tax return, I'm looking for that beneficiary to declare this income. That I respect because in, it should actually have been done. So people not doing it in themselves, that's, that's a fraudulent activity. So SARS so just trying to make sure that nothing slips between the cracks. So to answer, that's, that's the answer to your second question. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, um, uh, uh, thank you, Bruno. Um, uh, a lot of information there, <laughs> but uh, obviously all, all of it necessary. So yeah. Um, I think we should all just be careful because people seem to think um, they always try to find ways to sort of uh, run around the, 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 the rules and legislation and try to sort of escape liability. And at the end of the day, 
people always know whether maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And if they are, if, if, even if you do come up with this brilliant idea and how to sort of evade SARS or, or whatever, uh, within no time, they're actually going to clamp down on you and they will change mm -hmm. their, their systems and to make sure that you, you can no longer do that type of stuff. So yeah, thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. And I think yeah, that's it for today. Cool. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. you too.